really right. First time class there at MIT. Got skills. I'm a champion of D. I cannot. Who is the actor in the Christopher Nolan Batman movies? You don't remember Barking Guy? No, I've never seen them. It was, um, he was just in the Ford versus Ferrari movie. I haven't seen that one Jeffrey's either. Jeffrey's screaming the answer in the other room. Oh, you need to watch the Ford v. Ver- Ver- Ferrari movie. That's a, that's a really good movie. That's, that's an excellent movie. Is it 100% historically accurate? Mm, but it, it, it's a good story. Um, Ford wanted to change their image or improve their image instead of coming out of World War II. Instead of being a stodgy, you know, we just make cars company. They wanted to be a fast, exciting company associated with racing and stuff like that. And so they even tried to buy Ferrari. And Enzo Ferrari insulted the leadership of Ford Motor Company. And so they said, fine, we're going we're gonna to beat him at Le Mans. Christian Bale, thank you so much. I knew he was screaming at me in the other room. Christian Bale. And... Uh, so uh, they hired uh, Carol Shelby, uh, American car enthusiast, manufacturer, race car driver, because Carol Shelby was one of the few Americans that actually won at Le Mans. And, uh, and so with uh, the driver that uh, Christian Bale played, they built, created, tested the, uh, the Ford GT40 took it to Le Mans and they won they beat Enzo Ferrari at his own game in uh, 1960s and so the movie is the telling of that tale and what what came about and then the race that they won to to beat Ferrari so it's a good movie you know, Matt Damon's in it he plays um, Carol Shelby and then Christian Bale's in it he's the British race car driver that uh, is hired to basically test and uh, fine-tune the, the GT40 to, to win the race. You're not a movie buff, are you? Not really. Not really? He, was, uh, he played Batman in the Christopher Nolan trilogy, um, which I think, of the three movies, I think I like the first one probably the best. Um, the second one... A lot of people liked it was the last uh, movie that Heath Ledger did before he committed suicide. He played Joker. Or not Joker. Yeah, Joker. And uh, he wound up uh, so traumatized and so mentally affected by the part that he got into the part, he he committed suicide after that. And then the third and final one in the series, the the evil villain was Bane. (laughs) And that one was... That was a little over the top, you know. Bane blows up all the bridges and everything and isolates Gotham City and lays it under siege and threatens to kill everybody in the city if he doesn't get his way. And uh, Catwoman is in it. And it's, it's, you know, for a Batman movie, it was a little, it was a little crazy. I watch movies from time to time. And uh, I started re-watching Longmire. Have you ever watched the Longmire series? I've not, I've not watched that. It was filmed up in uh, uh, Las Vegas in uh, New Mexico. And uh, I've, I've started re-watching those uh, TV shows again. Uh, just because they're from New Mexico. And I enjoy watching some of the stuff that's filmed in New Mexico. Because I look at it and go, I think I've been there. <laughs> I've been in that area. Anyway, Barky Guy is with us. Uh, later this hour, we'll have our Main Street update. Next hour, we'll have... Um, Joby here to talk fish on the Pecos Valley Bassmasters update. And uh, so that's what we've got going on. Tomorrow on the show, um, we are going to be graced with the presence of Louis Reyes as they're getting ready for their fall recreation programs at the Artesia Rec Center. Um, We have chamber chat tomorrow, and uh, we'll have to check in with June Marie. She's recovering from covid and uh, hasn't been doing much at the Literacy Council office in person, but uh, the last note I got was that she's doing much better and she's hopefully going to be back in the office. And so I don't know if she'll be here on the phone, but we'll, uh, we'll see how June Marie's doing. That's on the show tomorrow.
But right now, the Barking Guy continues. We got through the quotes of the week and uh, what news we had previously, and I think it's time to take a look at, uh, at what's coming up. But before we do that... Do you see what's walking in the door? Yes, I do. The Kith and Kin is walking kin. in the door. Thank you, Tana. That's our foodie sponsor for today. Yeah. You know what they have over there in their ice cream deal? Key lime pie ice cream. Mm. Have you tried that yet? You need to try the key lime pie ice cream. It is awesome. So let's see. We have forks. Which tells me we probably have, ta-da, scones and the, uh, what are they, the naughty buns? Yeah. Yeah, we've got the scones and the naughty buns. Look at that. Mm. Doesn't that look wonderful? And this is all homemade stuff, right, Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not, uh, this didn't come in on a beautiful truck. This, this is, I mean, the ingredients probably came in on a truck, but they were uh, prepared. Uh, let's see. Who are you? You're Jeffrey, right? Roger. <laughs> Who's the first person in here getting the, uh, getting the coffee? Is Jeffrey. Uh -huh. <laughs> How can I resist? I know. I'm sitting here wanting some more myself. So, uh, yeah, these are absolutely wonderful. I went in, um, was it Saturday afternoon? Well, I'll, I'll get it here in a second. I'm all right. I went in Saturday afternoon, and uh, they, were, they were busy. A lot of folks that were out and about getting sandwiches and stuff like that. And I got some uh, Jack Sparrow and Key Lime Pie ice cream. The Jack Sparrow was for me, and the Key Lime Pie ice cream was for Lana. And uh, she really enjoyed the ice cream. I like key lime pie. And uh, this is in an ice cream. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. They also still have some of the uh, hatch, uh, the, the ice cream with a little bit of hatch green chili in it. And I don't know if you've tried that yet. I haven't. I haven't done that. And you, and you haven't tried the key lime yet? Nope. No, you'll have to try that. Do you have a favorite ice cream or a favorite coffee blend over there? Not really. Not really? Whatever comes from there, you're happy with, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, because on Saturday, that was Saturday, because it wouldn't have been Sunday because they're uh, recaffeinating on Sundays. So, yeah, it was. Um, there's not a lot of places open on Saturday. Um, and so, yeah, there were quite a few people in there getting sandwiches and drinking coffee and having ice cream and just having a wonderful Saturday afternoon at Kith and Kin. And I need to ride my bike down there because they have these bike racks. They look like giant hangers, coat hangers, hanging off the front of the building. Those are bike racks. I have a bike. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I ride it around the block. <laughs> <laughs> I got an air tire inflator. I said, hey, let's see if it works on the bike. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It works great. So I need to get my bike out and ride my bike more often. So, anyway, where are we at, Barking Guy? Where would we like to resume on your report today? We have the calendar. The calendar. Da, 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 da. Today, Monday the 8th, this is the first day of the radio segment for 2022-23. It'll be every week at, after this, but uh, there, there are a few weeks that there won't be a segment like, like Labor Day. Right, right. That's right. And the 102 Days and Nights of Summer continues through Labor Day. Okay. You know, just a few get, more weeks. Yep. And that's, you know, that's a law enforcement thing. Don't drink and drive and, and watch, uh, watch the school zones. Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, and then goes to Thursday the 11th, first day of school, Artesia Public Schools, grades 1 through 12. That's all of them, isn't it? Except kindergarten. Oh, except kindergarten. Okay. Uh, quarterback club hamburger fry and scrimmage, 5 p.m. Bulldog Bowl. This week? This week. Already? The 11th. Already? Yep, already. <laughs> Tickets are $5. You can get them there. Okay. 
you can buy them from any uh, quarterback club member, but I just buy them at the door. You know, I just buy them there. Yep. And the summer band show, 6.30 p.m. Uh, after the uh, scrimmage. Okay. Friday the 12th, last day to get reserved tickets for last year's ticket holders before they open up to the public. Okay. And send-off for boys and girls soccer to Silver City. I got this one, 3 p.m. at the Mac Chase Complex. Headed to Silver City to start the season. Yep. And Saturday the 13th, boys and girls soccer at Silver Invitational at Silver City. And they're, they're playing two games each. Okay. Okay. Boys and girls? Boys and girls. All right. And that brings us back to Monday. That's uh, that's the day that the reserve seat tickets open up to the public. Okay. And that's what we got. Well, it's a slow start, but that's okay. I bet it gets busy the week after that. Yeah. Uh, we got the first home soccer game on Tuesday, the 16th. That's uh, the boys are playing Hobbs, and the girls are going to Hobbs. Okay, so that's yeah. a week from tomorrow. That's a that's a week from tomorrow. <sighs> oh my gosh! You know, it's funny when you go to Max Preps and you type in Artesia. There yeah. are three listings that come up. New Mexico and California is you know, are two of them. Right, Artesia, which is in Lakewood, California, they are called the Pioneers, which I'm surprised they're still called the Pioneers because those are the racist people that came over from Europe and wiped out the indigenous people's populations of this country. So we can't be calling teams Pioneers because that would be offensive uh, to the indigenous peoples. Uh, there's Artesia, New Mexico which the Bulldogs, which again is racist and insensitive because you think of Bulldogs, you think of Winston Churchill and Winston Churchill was, you know, was a racist bigot. And then uh, Martinsville, Indiana. And you're going, what's Martinsville, Indiana? The Artesians is their mascot. <laughs> so that's so when you type in Artesia into Max Preps, those are the three references that pop up. The Pioneers of Artesia, California, the Bulldogs of Artesia, New Mexico, and the Artisans of, uh, or the Artesians of Martinsville, Indiana. So there you go. Soccer, huh? Silver and then next Tuesday. Yep. Wow. I'm looking forward to it. I think volleyball is not that far behind. And then, of course, nope. the first football game is uh, the 19th. The 19th here at home against. Yeah, and and choir. Mm -hmm. You do, you're doing the tailgate. You get me a ticket before Monday. I'll I'll announce who sold me the ticket. Is that who's doing the tailgate, or we don't know, or we know that the choir is doing the first one. Oh, okay. And the cheerleaders are doing the second one. Okay, so we do know that. But we do not know anything. Like, what's the menu? What's the price? We, we know nothing. Nothing. <laughs> now you sound like Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> nothing. We know nothing. So I remember. Yeah. I, so. I remember Hogan's Heroes. TV show from back in the day. Um, did you watch a lot of television growing up, Barking Guy, or, or not much? I watched my fair share. Yeah. Um... Did you watch a lot of baseball on TV or watch, listen to that mostly on the radio? I, I watch baseball and I listen to baseball. It's kind of sad when uh, Vin Scully passed yes. away. Yep. And it uh, kind of reminded me when I was growing up, I was listening to, uh, uh, well, I was listening to Hank, who did the play-by-play -play of the Clinton baseball team there in Clinton, Iowa. Uh, but then uh, Harry Carey, I was a big Harry Carey yeah. fan when he went from the White Sox over to the to the Cubbies. Growing up, who did you, uh, you were in the Detroit area, right? That's right. Big uh, Tigers fan? I was. And then Ernie Harwell was Ernie on. Harwell, I couldn't remember that he, name. He was he a long-time voice. He was there. on the radio. Yeah. He, he was there for a long time, wasn't he? Yep. And George Kell was another one. Okay. Well, uh, Clinton... Iowa, for the longest time, they were affiliated with 
the Tigers. That was their Class A minor league baseball team for the Detroit team was the Clinton Tigers. And then uh, they, they ended their association with Detroit. I'm not sure who ended it. And uh, there was a franchise that started in Seattle, Major League Baseball team, called the Pilots. I remember that. And I don't remember where they came from. They were... Um, yeah, they were an expansion team. And I think they went, went to Milwaukee after that. Yeah, they were uh, based in Seattle during the 1969 season. During their single season existence, the Pilots played their home games at Six Stadium and were a member of the West Division of Major League Baseball's American League. Remember, there was only there was the American League and the National League, and there were only two divisions. And that was the first year that they split into divisions. Okay. Um, to, 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 to the franchise moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and became the Milwaukee Brewers. So what happened to the team that was in Milwaukee? Well, well, there was Milwaukee Braves that became the, that went they to went, Atlanta. They went to Atlanta. Okay, so the Milwaukee Braves leave Milwaukee, go to Atlanta, become the Atlanta Braves. Milwaukee's without a team, didn't make in Seattle, so they moved to Milwaukee. Does that sound about right? Y yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, you know, 69, that, you know, that was the year after the, the, the Tigers won the World's, World Series in 68. It was the Mets that won in 69. Okay. A couple of factors were beyond the pilots' control. They were originally not set to start until 71, along with the Royals. However, the date was moved up to 69 under pressure from Senator Stuart Symington of Missouri. Professional baseball had been played in Kansas City in one form or another from 1883 until the A's left for Oakland after the 67 season. I didn't know that. So the Oakland A's were originally the Kansas City. They were in Kansas City. They were. So then they, Kansas City gets a new franchise, I guess in 71. Symington would not accept the prospect of Kansas City having to wait three years for baseball to return. The American League would not allow only one new team to enter the league, resulting in an odd number of teams unbalanced the schedule. That meant Kansas City and Seattle had to be admitted together. The Pilots had to pay the PCL $1 million to compensate for the loss of one of its uh, most successful teams. So it, uh, PCL would have been the Pacific Coast League. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they were a minor league team in the Pacific Coast League. They move up to become a major league team, and they had to pay the Pacific Coast League a million dollars in 1969. That was a lot of money. That's a lot of money. King County voters approved a bond for a domed stadium, which would become the King Dome. In February 68, with a 62% in favor, the pilots were officially born. California Angels executive Marvin Milks was hired as general manager. Joe Schultz, a coach with the National League champion St. Louis Cardinals, became the manager. And uh, Clinton, Iowa, was a Class A minor league team for the Seattle Pilots. But they didn't want to give up the Tigers. You know, they had a cute tiger was their mascot. And so the, they put the tiger in a boat <laughs> and said, here's your, here's your new Clinton pilots with the tiger in the boat. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was a long time ago, Barking Guy. A long time ago. Um, so did you enjoy listening to baseball on the radio more than watching it on TV? Mm. I would say I would say so because I could get radio more than I could, you know, television because at that time we only had the one TV in the family room. There was a TV in my parents' bedroom and we didn't get TVs until later. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a small one in the kitchen. But if we watched TV, it was in the family room. Yeah. 
But we had radio. I had a radio in my room. Mm -hmm. And we had weeding radios, these portable transistor radios that you can hold in your hand. Okay. And if we were going to weed in the garden, we'd take, we'd take out a radio. And there was like, and, and there were several of them in a drawer. And that's what they were called, the weeding radios. That's what we, that's what we called them. We're going to go weeding in the garden, so let me get a radio. <laughs> get a radio. So we, <laughs> I like and it. we listen, we listen to, the, to the ball game. We listen to, to uh, CKLW and Keeners. Mm-hmm. That, and that was the top 40 stations. And that's what I would listen to. Yeah. And then... I would switch to uh, the station that had the Tigers when the Tigers were on. And you'd follow the Detroit Tigers. I did. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's a great story. We had um, the first TV I remember, you know, I was old enough to remember. We had a console color TV in the family room. And uh, we had an antenna in the attic. That's where we had the antenna to pick up the signals because the stations came out of the Quad Cities. We didn't have a TV station there in the town I grew up in. They came out of the Quad Cities, which was about 30 miles down the road, 40 miles down the road. Uh And so we had the antenna up in the attic. And then we came out of the attic, out the side of the house with the cable, and it was that flat two-wire in plastic. And we had little insulators screwed into the brick, so we kept it off the kept it off the wall, and then it came in through a hole that we drilled in the wall to connect to the TV, so we could get our we could get our television stations out of the Quad Cities. And uh, I think I, I remember I think I remember watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon for the first time. That was pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, it was in 69. Yeah. And then I remember watching Monty Python Flying Circus on Saturday nights on public TV. If I was not grounded. That was later in the 70s. We, I didn't watch a lot of TV. We played, spent, we were out in the yard playing. And I had a little yeah. brother that was uh, four years younger than me. and we. Yeah, we did that. We, you know, we played and we had to, you know, besides our... Or chores out in the garden. Mm-hmm. You know, you know we played. Yeah. What would you would you guys grow? Do you remember? I'm trying to remember what we grew. Carrots and beans and radishes, stuff like that. Well, there was. We had a rose garden. Okay. We had. Uh, I think we had. Uh, diff, you know, you know, different plants. And trees, mm-hmm. and then we had a vegetable garden. Okay. I know we grew pumpkins one year, and we grew watermelon one, you know, one year. And we and there was tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. And we had blackberry bushes. And we did too. Our neighbors had them. They had the blackberry bushes. Yeah. Just pick them off the tree. Blackberries. Yep. One. Well, one of my favorite chores was when the blackberries were ripe. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom would make, you know, would bake a pie. Oh yeah, and we would have to gather the blackberries so that she could make them. Yep, yep. We used to do the same thing. We didn't have them in our yard, but our neighbor had the blackberry trees, and it was kind of like in, if with the part of the tree that was over in our yard, we could have those blackberries. We had a little uh, granny apple tree in the backyard. We had little granny apples. Rhubarb. Did you guys have rhubarb? We didn't grow rhubarb, but we could get rhubarb. Yeah. And I do remember rhubarb pie sometimes. Yeah, we, we had uh, rhubarb in the backyard. And then for flowers, we had peonies. Do you remember the peonies? I remember peonies. And the ants would crawl all over them to, so that the buds would open up. Mm-hmm. I remember all that. Big black ants. Not like the little brown ones they have around here (laughs) no (laughs) the big black ants so yeah that was it was kind of fun growing up in the in the midwest 
We, yep. We'd uh, go down to the ballpark to watch the baseball team play. We had uh, tractor pulls on the weekends. <laughs> Uh, we had boat races on the Mississippi River, the speedboat races on the we Mississippi. Had, we had speedboat races on, on the Detroit River. Okay. Yeah, we had we had those. Yeah. And and we had the uh, well July Fourth and July First. Well, Canada's Independence Day and you know Canada Day and Fourth of July. It you know, the weekend that is closest to those there would be a big international festival okay I remember going to that going to the international festival yep I don't think we had any international festivals but we had uh, a lot of bratwurst and beer (laughs) yeah Yeah, we had beer (laughs) oh yeah definitely had beer yep a lot of that growing around And, Um, and, and, and soda was called pop that's exactly right. You're exactly right. We would go down. There was a Tasty Freeze. I remember, blocks down the street. We'd walk down to Tasty Freeze as kids and get an ice cream cone or whatever. And my cousins were visiting from New Jersey. And uh, we went up to the Tasty Freeze and they said, I want it. They said, I want a soda. And I said, no, you don't. They said, yeah, I want a soda. I said, no, you don't. Well, what do I want? You want a pop? No, I want a soda. So he ordered a soda, and he got a soda. He said, well, this is what I wanted. I said, I know. I told you. Order a pop, and you'll get what you want. So that they were pops. And Pepsi was real big where I grew up. Not so much Coke, a cola. Yeah, there was... We had Coke and Pepsi, but we also had local brands like Fago. Fago was a local brand, huh? And Verner's. <laughs> Verner's. We had Verner's. What did... Coca Cola, I mean, a uh, uh, carbonated yeah. dark beverage there. Verner's is it was a ginger ale, but that okay. ginger ale was was more potent than normal ginger ale. Gotcha. And that's what you make Boston coolers out of. <laughs> I bet you did. But Boston doesn't refer to the city; it refers to the street. Okay. In Detroit. Okay. You know? And that's where, you know, Boston Edison, that's that's where the rich people lived. Ah, so you had your Boston coolers. The rich people drank Boston coolers. You know, just about everybody did. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Pepsi was really, really big. There wasn't a whole, I mean, you could buy Coke in the store, but it was Pepsi country. Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi. Bottling plants, I mean, machines, everything was Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi. And then, uh, and then I moved down to Alabama and Mississippi, especially, and it was totally opposite. You you couldn't find Pepsi hardly anywhere. Everything was Coke. And uh, I remember going into a, a drugstore. You want a Coke? Sure. What kind? You said Coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what kind? You want orange? You want root beer? You want you know what kind of Coke do you want? And so Coke was just like yeah. the brand name for carbonated beverage. It was it was the the given name for carbonated beverage, and then you had to say what kind of Coke you wanted. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember it being that way in the Midwest with the Pepsi. It was pop. Do you want a pop? What kind of pop do you want? I'll have a Pepsi. Yeah. A little bit different. Is that how it was up there in Michigan? Yep. S- same thing. They call it pop. Yeah. What kind? Of, and then what kind of pop you want? But in Mississippi, it's you want a Coke. Sure. What kind? Yep. And that was the first time I had Barks Root Beer. I like Barks Root Beer. I've had that. Yeah. Now, we had A&W's. We had an A&W drive-in in in Clinton. Do you you have A&W's up there? We did. Uh Uh-huh. Every so often, if we were were good, we'd have a treat. We'd go to the A&W drive-in, and Dad would roll down the window, and they'd bring it, uh, come out on the roller skates, and they'd put the... I remember... And then there was another local drive-in. I never, we never went there, but Lana, I think, went there with her parents. Don's drive-in. And it was a, it was a popular place in downtown Clinton. Don's drive-in. So, growing up trying to think of the locals. Anyway, enough of this memory lane stuff. Anything else we need to mention today, Barking Guy? We got it all. Go dogs. Arf! All right, every Monday. 745 Barking Guy 
And, and again, if you've got something going on, you know, church group, uh, youth group, whatever, nonprofit organization is doing something, you got your tailgate party going on, get a hold of us here at the radio station. We'll pass that information on to the barking guy, and we will share it with everybody. Yep. Raffle tickets, banquet tickets. We cover it all. That's right. So we'd love to get that on the radio for you. What was that email address? It was uh, events, wasn't it? It or was calendar at ksvpradio.com. Calendar at ksvpradio.com. And that way it gets to Lana, which means it will get taken care of when it gets to her. So That's right. All right. Thank you, Barking Guy. You're welcome. We'll see you next time. I'm getting some of that coffee. I'm, I'm thirsty for coffee.